Hello, welcome back to the Joy of Code. This is Michael Kölling again and today I will tell you about manipulating images in Greenfoot. Um, there's quite a bit to say about images so we will just start today and then go deeper into it in future episodes. This is actually also another good review of object interaction because just about everything we do from now on uh, has to do with interacting objects and this is an example of this. Um, the first thing I want to do is I don't like the white color of my background here. I want to make the background black. So I just want to paint black on my background. I don't want to use a static image. Um, that is, I don't want to make an image file in an image program. I just want to do that uh, programmatically. That is by by filling this um, with black in program code. Um, once we have learned to do this, we can make much more interesting images once we can programmatically change images. So the background is of course the background of the world so I will be working in the world class so I'm going into the world class and then here in the constructor first I want to get my own background image I can say get and if I hit control space for my code completion see oh the, it's this first one already here this method there's a method called get background and if you look at the details it returns an object of type greenfoot image so what I'm getting back from get background is a Greenfoot image object and says the comment here says it as well return the world's background image and then I can draw on that image object so let's choose this and let, just to show you how you should think about this let me try to illustrate that here so here oh, let me just take some black here so here is my world object so when I program in my world class we are in this world object the world object has always actually a reference to a different object um, of type Greenfoot image and I just abbreviate that here as GI that's my Greenfoot image um, so the world always has a Greenfoot image object and that Greenfoot image object here that is the background image that we see in our main window and so when I um, let me just try to start take another color when I start um, writing uh, my code I'm in the world class so here I'm actually writing code for the world object um, and when I so I'm here is where I'm actually working um, initially when I write code for my um, world class and I do the get Im uh, get background call what I'm actually doing is I'm getting um, a reference to this object here so get background will give me a reference to my image object and then I can do something with it one thing I can do is I can store that in um, in a variable so if I store that in a variable a variable it's like a box that I can store things in and I can put my reference in a variable and give that a name. Let's do that first here. So here get background gives me the reference to the image object and then I store that um, in a variable that I call background background um, and the type of this variable needs to be greenfoot image. Um, so now I'm declaring a variable, local variable of type Greenfoot image. I call it background and I call get background to get my background image object and store it in there. So now I can use this background variable that refers to my background image to do something with it. Let's see what we can do with it. Uh, we can go back to our Greenfoot API and look at the Greenfoot image class because we've got an object of that class. And here now we can draw onto that image. We can draw ovals, we can draw polygons, rectangles, other shapes we can fill. There's a fill method that fills the entire image with a drawing color. Um, the drawing color I can set. There is a um, set color um, and with that color I can set the color for all drawing operations that I do afterwards. So that sets essentially a pen color. So all operations, all drawing operations that I do afterwards will use this use this color. This set color uses a 
an object as a parameter of type java awt.color. Um, this class is not automatically known to Java. So here I want to do a set color um, and now I need to put in a color object. Um, that color class I need to import because it is it comes out of the standard Java library and it is not automatically known in Greenfoot. So I need to write import java.awt.color and once I do that that color class is known in my class here and I can use it. Um, and then the color class has some constants. I can write color dot black is a constant in the color class. We can later look up what the other constants are. Um, so color dot black is a constant that gives me color object that is black. And this one now sets black as the working color for my background. And then I can say back ground dot oops I meant to do my code completion fill and that should fill the whole image with that color that I have previously set. Um, let's try that out. Compile this and there my background is now black and if I run this I get my bouncing balls bouncing on a black background. So essentially what we've done here is um, w the get background um, gave us this reference, a copy of a reference, it gave us a reference to our Greenfoot image which is our background. We have stored that into a variable that we have named background and then we've used this variable to directly talk to the background image and tell the background image we want to fill with black. Um, we can actually shorten this as just a variation. Um, not that there's anything wrong with this one, we could just um, write it this, but we could also just say get background dot set color. So instead of storing it in a variable, let's just do that just for practice sake. Instead of storing it in a variable, I could just take this out and here instead of saying background, I can just say get background and here I can say get background. So here I'm doing a method call that gives me the background image and this call gives me back the background image object and then I can just chain my method calls. I can just say dot and call a method on the object that I'm getting back from this method. So here in this line of code I've got two method calls in a row. I've got the get background call and then the set color call. So that one will be done first and that gives me the background image object and then I call this method on the result of the first one. So I can do that as well. That has exactly the same effect and um, I'm just not storing the object in a local variable in the meantime. Both styles are perfectly fine. Which style you prefer is pretty much up to you. Okay, that was the beginning of working with images. Over the next couple of episodes we will do a lot more with images and see that we can get some quite interesting effects by working dynamically with Greenfoot images and painting on the images. But that is enough for today. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.